Okay, so I'm going to start the first tumbler from the Dark and Deadly Mermaid set. And I don't think I'm going to use any of the vinyls. I think I'm just going to use two of the glitters, Urchin and Water Dragon, and this decal. They whispered to her, you cannot withstand the storm. She whispered back, I am the storm. Um... So I'm going to cut this one off the sheet. I have a prepped and painted black 20 ounce skinny tumbler. So I'm going to set my decal aside and I'm going to do the tack it method for the glitter. And I'm going to try to ombre the two. That way the decal will sit on top of the urchin up here. I may use one of the other elements on the back. From the element sheet, I haven't decided yet, but this is the direction this is headed. Kind of simple, but I um, I don't really think I want to add any of the vinyl. If I do anything, I may do a short V split of this one. But I'm going to see how the tumbler looks with just the glitter to start. But I do really like this one. So I'm kind of between using this as a V or one of the elements. So we're going to play it by ear and see how this shapes up. My tacket over and over is watered down a little bit. And I'm going to do this in two coats. And let it dry thoroughly in between. You'll know it's dry when you don't have any white left. And I'm just applying this with a soft brush. This is a Timu makeup brush. And you will want to wash your brush in between coats. Because if your tacket dries in your brush, your brush is going to be no bueno. I will be back after the second coat is dry. Okay, so I'm ready to try to get the glitter on this tumbler. It's actually next day, but this should still be tacky enough to work without giving it another coat. So I'm going to start with the urchin. And I did put some in a medicine cup to make it hopefully a little easier to work with. But this is going to go on the top half. It has a little bit of a mix to it as well, so we'll see how this goes. Is gorgeous. So this does almost have some fine, fine shards in it. Um, it's fine because those will probably rub off in the burnishing process. But you can see on the paper, this color is gorgeous, though. And we're going to come in with our next color, which is the Water Dragon at the bottom. I'm going to leave just the slightest gap to try and overlap this a little bit into a bit of an ombre 
they're going to mix a bit when I burnish them. So it's really not going to matter all that much. Um, tack it over and over. Never, ever completely dries. That's why I can get away with the fact that I did this yesterday. And I'm doing my glitter step today. Um, especially since it's quite chilly in here. Alright. This is where the colors are going to start to mix. And I'm just going to do it from up high. I'm going to sprinkle this one first because this one is a little bit finer. And then I'm going to come back in with this one. And come back over with a little bit more of this one just to fill in any gaps. Okay, so that is full coverage. I'm going to pause you guys, clean this up, and I will be right back. Okay, so I think I'm going to do the alcohol method of laying the tacket down. I typically tend to burnish by hand, but I'm going to use 91% of isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. And I'm just going to rub the cup with it. And as I suspected, a lot of those shards are coming off. When you burnish the glitter, you're laying the glitter down flat, is what you're doing. You're sticking it flat to your surface, and it makes that holographic really, really pop. And this color has a beautiful, beautiful, like, purple, lavender background. I'm going to flip my rag over before I start the bottom. I'm going to do over the line where they meet. I'm just kind of doing the color section separately to start. But can you see how much holographic has popped through by doing this? I find the bottom is usually harder to get them to lay flat than the sides. Although this is such a fine cut that it is really not doing too badly at all. Fold this in half again. And I'm going to go over that ombre line now. So I'm going to come in with my hands at this point and just make sure it's pretty smooth. I'm not scrubbing at it, I'm just kind of lightly rubbing. Okay, so I'm going to come in with a coat of epoxy to get this sealed down. 
Okay, so I am ready to get the coat of epoxy on this. I'm just going to put a thin coat on it and then let it spin to dry. And after that, we will be back to do the vinyl and decal and all of that happy stuff. Okay, we are going to get this one put together. So I'm going to do a very shallow V on this. So what I've decided. So I'm going to start at the bottom. line off first. And this should be about eight inches high. I'm going to do my V at... I'm going to go ahead and do a little over half, so I'm going to cut it at 5 inches. I'm going to cut an edge off. And I'm going to go ahead and cut about 2 inches of vinyl off. I could have done it the other way, but because I already cut this line. Yeah, I want to do it this way. So this is the two inch mark. I'm going to go just a scotch past that. Because of that extra t um, edge. So this is going to be my vinyl. I just want to wrap it quick to test fits. Good. It's going to have a tiny, tiny overlap at the bottom here, which is what I'm going for. So I'm just going to go ahead and crease it at the top in the center so I know where to cut my strips. And I'm going to line that crease up if I can find it again and line my corner up and cut this, this corner off and then do the same on the other corner. This is just a quick easy way of making the triangles if you don't need like a very super specific size cut. I'm finding this to be the most effective way for me. So that's it. That's all we're going to use of the vinyl. I should have two pretty close pieces of triangle. And when I do triangles, I like to... See, I got a little off my crease, but it's not really going to matter in this instance because it's such a narrow overlap. Because I really want this glitter to show. Cut one piece, cut a second piece out of that. That's how I like to anchor my triangles. enough and this really doesn't matter what the front and the back is 
so and I'm gonna leave a good a good chunk at the bottom a good reveal it also doesn't matter which way it overlaps in this case so that makes it nice and simple because this is so small, I'm just going to hold it in place. And I did just get a little out of line, but pinstripes will cover. So... There's our little mermaid wrap. I am going to make sure this is on all the way. Ooh, see, I got a little piece of glitter on my felt and it's scratching it. This should show up just fine over this. And this printing is almost identical to this color, burnished. Like, it is perfect. But I'm going to trim this down a little bit more first. And I'm going to create an anchor because I do want my text to be as even as possible. Not even. Straight. Peel my anchor off. And same thing. Beautiful. I don't know if I want purple or silver or blue or even the blackish one. Because any and all of those would match. I think I'm going to go with the purple. I think the purple now. I'm kind of. I feel like the silver is going to pull the silver back down. So we're going to go with that. Start at the top here. I should have done the other side first because I am going to go down over the point. It'll be fine. Okay. So that is basically it. I do think I'm going to put the barest hint of sparkle into the entire top layer. So I think I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny hint of this in my epoxy. It won't overpower the cup. It'll just make the whole thing shimmery. So I'll be back over at the turner. I lied. I'm back. Um, I want to make sure that I basically only get fines because I do believe this was the one that had some shards in it. So I'm going to run it through my sifter quick. And see if this is fine enough mesh to pull out. That was dumb because I just dumped it on the... No, 
the shards will go right through this as well. The smaller ones anyways. The bigger ones it's catching. So I'm just going to put those right in my dump jar. And I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. Okay, so my epoxy is mixed, and I'm going to show you just how little of this I'm going to use. Like, that much on my stir stick to start. If I feel like I need more, I can add a little bit more, but I just want it to have the barest little tiny sparkle. It's not really going to, it's not really going to affect the look of any of the other glitters already on here. It's just going to shine up the uh, vinyl mostly. Because this vinyl does have that little bit of faux glitter effect to it. Which, if you've been with me, you know I'm not a huge fan of. Usually when I have a vinyl like that, I do put some kind of glitter over the top just to make it actually sparkle. Okay. So this is going to get one more clear coat, but that's it. And then this cup will be done and available. If anybody is interested, please email me. Um, all of my tumblers are available. Just message me or leave in the comments if, I, if you see one you're interested in. I'm more than happy to sell them directly from the videos. But that is how that shimmer came out on that. See how it just jazzes it up a little bit. The bottom's just the blue. There's our gorgeous decal. They whispered to her, you cannot withstand the storm. She whispered back, I am the storm. Not cannot, can't. Tack it ombre. There's our beautiful mermaidy siren. So there we go. That is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.